Hi guys, you might have clicked on this link thinking I'm going to talk about something like MIDI here, but that's not the case. What if I told you that you could record audio with a visual camera with no microphone? Absolutely no microphone. Would you call me crazy? So to give full credit where it is due, our topic today is based on an old TED Talk that I saw, and I'll put a link to that original TED Talk in the description below so you can watch it if you want. The talk starts out by describing a tool that the speaker and his team built. Now, it's a software tool that is built to modify visual media, but if you bear with it for a while, it's also relevant to audio. So the way the tool works is it takes videos and it magnifies the motion within the video, and it can magnify it by a lot. It seems like it can magnify color changes and actual mechanical motion. So they use the example of being able to tell someone's pulse by running video of them through this tool. And you can see how it magnifies the flushing in their skin or the movement of their veins that are close to the surface. They also use the example of the creator using this tool to magnify the motion of his baby breathing in his video baby monitor. That way he can tell that his baby is still alive and well, even while sleeping and apparently totally still. Even just using this tool in the visual realm, it's really cool to think of all the applications. You could use it for non-invasive medical monitoring of patients, for some amazing art projects, or to get more information from something like a security feed or your baby or pet monitor, and even for analyzing structural integrity and motions of buildings. But you can also use it for audio projects. So we know that audio is composed of compressions and rarefactions in the air, and these areas of compressions and rarefactions travel through the air, moving the air particles slightly as they go, and eventually hit your ear. That's what we translate into audio information. So microphones that we use today generally use a diaphragm to ultimately translate this mechanical data of compressions and rarefactions in the air into electrical energy in the form of variations in voltage, which we call analog signal because it's analogous to the actual audio. We then sometimes translate that variation in voltage to ones and zeros, which is how we store digital audio. Now, a diaphragm in a microphone is pushed back and forth by the compressions and rarefactions in the air, kind of in an inverse fashion to the way the speaker cone pushes the air to create audio. The way the microphone then converts that movement of the diaphragm into variations of voltage varies based on the type of microphone, and that's a topic for another day. But for today's topic, it's important to keep in mind that almost all microphones we use today use a diaphragm that is physically moved by the compressions and rarefactions in the air. There are a few exceptions to this. I believe they're all on the more experimental side where a microphone will use something like a stream of water or a laser instead of a diaphragm. But even in those instances, the water or laser or whatever it is that is replacing the diaphragm is still being physically moved or affected by the compressions and rarefactions in the air. It's a common aspect of all microphones that we use today. This means if we set a microphone on the other side of an acoustic barrier that blocks those compressions and rarefactions, we probably aren't going to receive sound into the microphone, and we won't be able to translate that into analog or a digital signal. Now, however, with the use of this tool, we can translate audio into a digital signal or even an analog signal if they want to take an extra step. And we can do that without requiring that the audio moves a diaphragm within a microphone. So the way it works is you only need a video of something that's in the same acoustic space as where the sound source is located. So in the TED talk, they took videos of a bag of chips and a plant as examples. In essence, they're turning whatever the object is in that acoustic space into the diaphragm, and then they're filming it with a video camera. So the compressions and rarefactions in the air that make up the audio moves the object, so the chip bag or the plant or what have you, and then we capture those tiny movements on video. Normally those movements are so small that there's no usable data there to translate, but with the use of this tool, they then magnify the movements in the object and then they can translate that into audio. It's crazy. So the quality is still pretty bad and it sounds a lot like the quality level of the original wax recordings, but it's still there and I'm excited to see if they can improve the quality. And we might be light years away from using this technology in the recording studio, but if you're an audio nerd like me, the enormous implications of this are fascinating. I mean, just think about it. You could take a video feed from a security camera and potentially translate that video into some usable audio for what was being said in the room. It could be huge for law enforcement. It could be a big issue in surveillance and privacy rights in the future, too. 
Uh, things that were said in private but caught on camera previously without any audio recorded could potentially now be translated into usable audio. Just think about the ramifications for things like politics. Things that were previously in an entirely soundproof room, and I do mean soundproof, not sound treated like most studios, is now subject to being recorded if a camera has access to the room through a window or if there's a security camera in the room already. With this technology, people have to be a lot more careful about what they say and where they say it. It's really amazing and I'm curious to see if anyone recovers the audio from any interesting footage using this tool. Oh, and that's another interesting thing about this tool. You can use it for free. They made it open source, so I'll put a link to where you can find it in the description below. So let me know if you guys end up using it for anything. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, so that's all I have time for today. I hope you guys don't mind me diverging a bit from more studio-oriented things, but the audio nerd in me gets really excited about this type of topic. I hope you guys liked this video, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. For today's question, I want to know what's the weirdest microphone that you've ever heard of? Please leave your answers in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, share the video, or subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday, and thanks for watching.